everybody. Kind of a grumpy morning for me, not only because of the weather, but I didn't. I could have slept much longer, but yeah. That's the way it goes. I talk, we are of course here to talk a little bit about the soccer results of the weekend. Uh, today I did not make any notes, just looked at the most important things uh, just now. And I'm not saying too many wrong things. And yeah, let's get started with the good stuff. The first, the best news of the weekend happened yesterday between 5 and 7. My team, Lask, played at Rapid Vienna and won 1 0, which is the first time since a long time that they won there. Um, Rapid is in a veritable crisis. Uh, we have this new mode where you know we have 12 teams, um, everyone plays everyone once, then uh, the table is split in half and points are being uh, reduced by uh, 50%. So in that scenario, Rapid at the moment is only in 8th spot, 5 points behind 6th spot which would give them into the championship round. Um, nerves are running high in, uh, in, in Vienna at the moment. And yeah, Lask is second. Uh, way off the pace behind Salzburg, I yeah, gotta say that. But we're in second place, uh, comfortably three points ahead of the third place team, which is another surprise team in St. Burton. So yeah, uh, and from Wallace, Wallace, Wallace saw the highlights, once they got it going, they got it going good. I mean, uh, the highlights commentator team said, uh, Lask had so many chances in the second half they cannot even show them all which uh, angered me a little bit uh, because they showed some half chances of Rapid from the first half you see they're the big team and um, you see the bias to this Rapid in television here a lot but from what I can tell uh, it was a well-deserved 1-0 victory sorry if you hear that it's raining I have the white bus on so like it. Let's talk about which games I actually watched. Uh, actually, not that that many. Um, felt a little bit sick Saturday in the evening, and we actually had quite a few things to do at home. So yeah, um, can only take what you can get. So uh, the first match that I watched was Saturday in the afternoon. I was thinking it was already a little bit in. 3.30, shall I watch uh, Udine Roma? Uh, and then I saw, ah, there's Watford against Liverpool. Maybe that might be the better game. Um, I don't know anything, I've not seen any, any, anything about Udine against Roma, but that Watford-Liverpool game in the first half was one poor fest. Uh, it was to such a degree that I was actually working on stuff close by and not watching much and I was not missing much, honestly. Uh, I think there was, it, it took until the 4.40 when there were two chances on either side. Um, Liverpool then, I think it should have been a penalty given against Liverpool. Uh, I don't know if it was before the first goal or afterwards. But that I think would, would have changed the game significantly. Um, but yeah, Liverpool took a lead, a uh, scrappy lead. Mo Salah um, was there where a striker should be and put it in the net, but I think it was deflected. I remember that I was not very impressed by that goal. I was have a more, way more impressed by the second goal by Arnold Alexander. A wonderful free kick, um, making it 2 0 and basically sealing off the game for Liverpool. Firmino added a third. And yeah, Liverpool actually needed the points because Manchester City completely destroyed West Ham United 4 0. And so I think it's now uh, Manchester City 35 and Liverpool 33. Um, and then all the eyes were uh, to Wembley. What are Tottenham and uh, Chelsea gonna do? Chelsea didn't do much and Tottenham did a lot. Uh, I think after 17 minutes the game was basically decided 2-0. Um, especially, I think uh, it was Dele Alli with a nice pr uh, 
you know, he just touched it with way the head and, and fell in, in, into the net. And at that point, uh, I thought that could have been up already by a goal. And just really thought that GLZ is gonna try to come back into the game. I don't even want to say they were ca uh, caught on, on the counter, but it was more or less a counter attacking move and came from far out, a rolling, a rolled it into the net. I didn't think that this was such a dangerous shot, but Kepa in goal. I don't know, it didn't look good on him. I mean, yes, he couldn't see the shot and it had some speed to it, but it was not that it was now such a shot that needs to be uh, going in a, a keeper should well save this, I had the feeling. At that point, I was already feeling sick. I had a huge headache and I didn't see much of the game. I saw that it ended 3 1 for Tottenham. Um, but to be honest, I could not pay much attention. I had such. I was feeling weak with a major headache and I decided to go to bed. Uh, and that despite me wanting to watch uh, the Copa Libertadores final, more on that later, or Atleti against Barca, um, I just needed to take care of myself at that point. And yeah, um, as it turned out, this was actually the best decision that I could have done. Um, also, I, I found it a little bit weird that Chelsea was playing in yellow against Tottenham, but then I, it made sense. I mean, um, yes, Chelsea has a different blue than a Tottenham blue, but I think it makes some sense. I just, white against yellow doesn't seem too well to me. And so, Premier League on top, 35 City, 33 Liverpool, now 31 Tottenham, 28 Chelsea. Um, Pretty much seems that this is a two horse race, and I'm not sure if it will not become a one horse race uh, sooner or later. I frankly I don't see either. I would wish for Liverpool to get to get the title. I really wish for Liverpool to win the Premier League, uh, and I think they should put all their cards in to make a real title challenge. Don't go for the Champions League, uh, you've more than enough of these, go for the title. Uh, I gotta say it as bluntly as that. Um, and I gotta say that um, I have not been... Liverpool was always a team that I was not necessarily against it, but I, I still live in this horrible memory from 2005, where they won uh, against Milan the Champions League final, a game that they had no business of winning. Uh, but yeah. I gotta say, two years later, they should have won it. But that is a bitter taste in my mouth, and for that reason, yeah. I was always with them, not, I didn't like them that much, but you know, I get to like them a lot more. To the point where I'm considering a Liverpool shirt. Gotta say that. Uh, so yeah, for that reason, uh, I also, uh, you know, for me, Liverpool was always the hooligan team, but uh, yes, they were responsible for it for Hazel. Um, but when you watch this documentary on Hillsborough that I saw, on, I think it was 30 for 30, you probably can find it on YouTube. It's a tough watch. It's a tough watch. You really see that all is there of people being squeezed to death. You really can see that. Uh, I mean, that that haunted me for a, a, a lot, but I gotta say that uh, what the people there went through, the uh, mothers, especially the mother, mothers and fathers of the victims, is something no one else should uh, take. And I actually have to say, I gotta give it to Liverpool that they always took care uh, to, to, to remember those. And yeah. Um, Liverpool is an institution, I think, to be honest, of the northern teams that are still in the Premier League, I would say Liverpool is probably my favourite, although I also have a liking for Stoke City, unfortunately they're not, not there anymore. But that was my England weekend, yes, I watched uh, Ted on Sunday yesterday at 10 of Arsenal Bournemouth I saw the first goal which I think was an own goal and at that point I said nah I 
let's go to my default Serie A. I actually saw uh, just a tad of the Birmingham Derby, that's League One, um, Aston Villa against uh, Birmingham City. Um, there I saw at least uh, Birmingham City was 1-0 uh, up, then Aston Villa turned I think it was 2-1 at halftime. They made 3-1 shortly after the 3-2 and then it was 4-2. Um, Aston Villa is a team that should be in the Premier League, I gotta say that. And that's a team that I actually like. Um, if you didn't know, the members of Black Sabbath basically uh, grew up right there in Aston. Uh, in the shadow of the Villa Park, so liking heavy metal a lot, and actually, Black Sabbath is. I'm not going to say they're among my favorite bands, but I totally appreciate what Black Sabbath has been doing, and I adore them for that. So, um, just for that reason, I, I already have sympathy for Aston Villa. And going back to Liverpool before I go to other games, um, there is. Uh, a Pink Floyd recording, uh, I think it's on metal, where they have the Liverpool fans before it really became famous. I think this was in 1970 71, so it's before the big time of Liverpool as a European force. Um, great recording, uh, it's not the greatest of songs, but at the end, you can see. Uh, you can hear You'll Never Walk Alone, sung by the cop, uh, which I found interesting that Pink Floyd put it on there, especially since Roger Waters is an Arsenal fan. So. Okay, enough of music and English soccer. This was really all I saw of England. It was an English Italian weekend. Uh, quickly on La Liga, I only watched highlights of Barcelona uh, in Madrid against Atleti, which was the big game there. Uh, I think it was first against second. But there were hardly any highlights. I mean, if the highlights that I saw, this must have been an extraordinarily boring game. Uh, and of course, it's Atleti. I mean, they are playing it tight at the back and don't let Barcelona shine through. And they're not even Messi. I think Messi is still not quite uh, back to 100%. Um, and then in the second half, it was actually Atleti that was a little bit more threat threatening. I think Griezmann had a few chances, and then yeah, in the 77th, um, Diego Costa scores the goal. And I think many thought is the winner. Not quite, but um, you know, if Barcelona has had hasn't been showing much, and then suddenly you get it one nil, you gotta feel like you're a winner. It's a theme for games uh, this weekend. Uh, but Usman Dembele. Usman Dembele scores the equalizer. Uh, he hasn't been in the squad in the last game. And there were quite some, uh, how to say, quite some speculations around him. But yeah, Usman Dembele scored the equalizer. 1 1, uh, which meant that Barcelona stays just ahead of uh, Atletico Madrid 25 points and 24 points. But it also meant, since Sevilla beat Valladolid 1 0, that uh, we have a new leader in La Liga, Sevilla, 26, 25, 24, Atleti, I think Alaves has 23, but they lost this weekend, so they could also have lived from it, uh, if they would have won. So yeah, uh, Spain, uh, and the big result happened actually before I watched any game, and that was Eibar uh, demolishing Real Madrid. I didn't see the highlights. Eibar demolishing Real Madrid 3 0. So Real Madrid is now in. Are they even fifth? I think they're outside of everything. So um, Real Madrid, even with the new coach, there is something going wrong there. Um, luckily for them, the Spanish league, it seems all like. A snail race because there really is not, you know, the top teams are kind of weaklish, uh, they're not gain, gaining that many, many, many points. I mean, just compare the, they have exactly 13 rounds played. Um, the leader in Spain has 26 points, the leader in England has 33, uh, yeah, 35 points, something like you know, whatever, whatever, whatever they say, I think. 
uh, a lot more points in England than in Spain. I'm not even talking about Italy, because uh, Juventus is just uh, plowing over the field and the same thing in France. I thought PSG only won one deal. Um, but yeah, that was that. Um, I had some thought of watching some French soccer. Uh, I just saw seconds of uh, PSG against Toulouse. I saw a little bit and it was more to keep the TV going because I want to have the internet connection. If the fire stick is connected to all the internet and constantly running, I have good connection all the way through. So yeah, uh, I was a little bit of Nice uh, yesterday. Nice against Lille, which was, I like the Nice jersey, I don't like the Lille in the neon. Uh, that was a weird color matchup. But yeah, it was all Serie A from then on. Uh, and I didn't watch you, I didn't watch Inter. I don't want to see big downs, and especially of those two teams that I like least. Udine beat Roma. Uh, I like Udine, don't get me wrong. I uh, actually would have been more or less neutral-ish. No, I always say that Roma is my second team in Italy. Um, they have a chance of winning. If Milan is, is bad, I want that Roma is good. Napoli pro, pro, probably I really want to be good as well. But also Napoli had problems yesterday. I think they barely won one nil, if, if not nil nil. Um, but what I watched uh, and the watching was Fiorentina against Bologna. Um, first of all, uh, color match of Bologna, of course, in their home uh, jerseys, which is the rosso blue with white pants. I actually like the Bologna look overall. <laughs> and then Fiorentina. Okay, it was clear that uh, it will be the wagers, but uh, boy, they chose the green one. And after a while, thinking about it, it made sense. I mean, you have um, the purple one against the red and blue doesn't provide enough contrast. Um, you can use the white one, but then you have the white pants, so might look a little bit weird, although probably that would have been the one that I would have gone for, the goalkeeper had that actually. And then what, uh, you have four <laughs> alternates, what do you have left? Blue, light blue, no, not gonna happen. Uh, red, not gonna happen, so green's left. Made some sense, looked a little bit weird though. The game <laughs> ended goalless, but it was comically. Uh, the first half was a little bit more even between the two teams. Everyone having chance to score. Uh, I was there just, just think Bologna has, now, uh, has Rodrigo Palacio, and this guy played in a World Cup final. And I don't know what's more sad that this guy ever played in a World Cup final, or that he is now playing for Bologna against relegation. That was I was not sure what's worse. I never rated that guy that super high, honestly. Um, it has not, nothing to do with Inter, it's just whenever he never really struck me as a, a great, great f attacking forward, but okay. So, um, Fiorentina should have won this game by three or four goals in the second half. Simeone alone had enough chances to pull the home. Um, it reached, especially in the first 15 minutes of the second half it reached comedy proportions how they missed chances uh, there was even i think very two missed uh um, no 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 missed hit the bar and the bar and the ball just above simeone case i had many chances then had counter attacks which just they couldn't get the last touch it was difficult touch but they couldn't get the last touch right fiorentina dominated the game so much they they really should have beaten it and i actually i love watch, watching fiorentina there's never a boring game and they have it I really think they have a good squad. They remind me a little bit about Lask in the 90s. They're not a top, top, top team, but they are a team that can really cause some trouble, but sometimes have even trouble themselves. But they are uh, a rather proactive team. It's very nice. Fiora Fiorentina is really nice to watch overall. So I actually like it. And I thought Fiorentina Bologna, you know, they're just uh, an hour apart. Uh, I don't want to say it's a derby, but you know, it's. Um, there's some proximity there. There are the two ends of the Autostrada through the Apennine Mountains. Beautiful drive if you ever do that. Uh, if you ever drive that, don't take the Tiratissima. Take the uh, Turistica. Uh, you see some nice villages. And yeah, it's a decent drive. Did it last year, a bit more than a year ago now. 
okay, so watch that one. Ended in a nil-nil, uh, and then it was all for me. Lazio, Milan, Lazio, Milan, Lazio, Milan. <laughs> right, right. Um, I loved Milan in the black, and uh, those red pants are just killer. Um, they look to me more like surfing shorts than soccer shorts. Uh, but I like the look. I mean, I actually like the short, the black jersey with the sleeves. Uh, that 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 look, looks nice, and I'm actually. I honestly would not buy these pants, but I really, really like that they are going with that look. Uh, it's something different, and for that, um, I like it. Uh, but yeah, that game, Lazio, I gotta say, especially in the first first half, Lazio was the better team. And can I say how much I love those Lazio jerseys, the home jerseys with the Eagle on the front? I wish that Lazio goes with that look full time. Uh, it's glorious. And especially if you go, they had this crest that was kind of a uh, trapezoid with the same pattern. I'm not fond of that one, but as an overall pattern here, that's great. And then have the regular Lazio logo. Um, I am a Roma fan, but that Lazio shirt is super tempting to me. Uh, that's probably one of the ones. If I make a top 10 of jerseys that I would want to have this season, that Lazio jersey is at least near the very top. I gotta say that. That's a gorgeous jersey. But yeah, we have... Uh, so Lazio was more or less the better team in the first half, but Milan was threatening and Cialanoglu hit the post could have saved me a lot of misery but uh, it got even you saw that even despite the injuries Milan hung in there Donnarumma had actually a really good game uh, I cannot imagine how happy I am to saying that I just had to look check the lights here the, the mega stau here mega ah, stau mega jam right now uh, Lazio was the more complete team, but I always felt that Milan is dangerous in the counter. Suso did not have a good game, but Suso played a wonderful, wonderful pass to Calabria, who crossed it over in the 78th, and it was just not offside by that much. Um, crossed it over, and Cassier took a shot that got deflected into goal, and I thought that's the winner. And Lazio came big time. And I'm not sure if Gattuso made any substitution. That would be the one thing uh, that I would fault him. But you know, it actually looked, Donnarumma made great saves. Um, so it seemed like a lucky win at Lazio, which would be so Milan. Because Lazio, Milan, that's the one match of where I have it internally still. Milan is gonna get three points there. No matter how, they can be bad, they can, can, can be good. They usually win that game. Last season they didn't, so I thought this might be a change. Correa uh, got in and got the equalizer in the 91st, which kind of deflated me a little bit. Uh, at that point, Lask had won the big game that I told you at the beginning. And then, yeah, Correa makes the goal. I actually, when I watch, watch it, I don't know how this could have been prevented. Uh, he got it. He took it well. He took it well. It was a nice goal. So, um, congratulations. I think the draw was deserved. I just would have liked that Milan pulls out uh, a miracle result. You know, they are really, they have so many in injuries and now Iguain is even out. Um, they really, really need the points badly. But as I said, I think Lazio deserved that point. I gotta be honest. So they would have probably deserved uh, some, some more. I also have, have I said a few. Uh, there were a few video uh, reviews uh, that all went Milan's way, but correctly. So I think there was one that they reviewed for a penalty on Immobile. Which, if that would have been a pair penalty, that that would have been a farce. I honestly think. Yes, about they did it um, strong, but it was not a penalty, and the goal uh, stood also. So yeah, little bit disappointing. Uh, and then in the evening, I saw most of the second half, and I listened more to the uh, Derby della Lanterna, um, which is one of those. I mean, it's only 12 against 13, but that's a, a classic Italian derby that's 
is watchable because um, the ground is probably one of the best in Italy um, and the rivalry is not a fierce I mean they don't like each other like every city rival rivalry but it is a more of a family atmosphere I always have the feeling it's not that this is um, they're going at each other like crazy I gotta say I'm more for Sampdoria but yesterday Genoa especially in the second in the first half was the better team I mean uh, Sampdoria took an early lead uh, through Cagliarella um, Biatek made a penalty that equalized and from that on uh, Genoa dominated and should have gotten 2-1 into the half second half was a little bit uh, more open slight advantage for Genoa I would say but overall yeah I think Genoa should have won this one but in the end the draw is not the worst thing I think Sampdoria would not have uh, deserved the victory it was a little bit distracting because I also watched NFL highlights a little bit and I saw my Carolina Panthers I have two favorite fa favorite teams and I have not even seen the results from the other the Green Bay Packers is probably my first and the Carolina Panthers is my second team those two I like the Seahawks, they lost against the Seahawks. Uh, I like the Seahawks too, but um, those would both will, will be my two teams. I am afraid those were two losses. I cannot get really into NFL because none of my teams is really performing that well. Uh, so this season is a little bit of dead NFL season for me, which is weird because I loved, love watching American football. God, I really gotta, gotta say that. The other thing that uh, I follow a little bit college football and there was the big Ohio State Michigan match of where Michigan for once was favored and they lose. Ah, but so big. Uh, for some reason I, I, I don't like Ohio State. Uh, I cannot explain it, but I explain it to you, but they are one of those teams that I just I don't like. Same thing like USC uh, and I mean University of Southern California, not Southern Cal South Carolina because that's where I went to. Yeah, that was my weekend. Um, I think I want to do... Uh, there's a lot we can talk about and I probably will have the time but the video is getting really long already. But I'm not even halfway at work uh, thanks to the stall, but I'm gonna end it here. Um, I want to make a separate video on the Copa Libertadores final. Um, because that... I'm just saying it was twice postponed. But what happened there is unimaginable in Europe and yeah, you gotta dig in a little bit deeper and I wanna shed some thoughts on that, but um, not in this video, I will do this in the next video. Well, let me know what you guys were watching uh, and one thing I need to say, Bayern Munich, <laughs> about that. Uh, they play at home against uh, Düsseldorf, um, had a 3-1 lead and scored in the last 15 minutes 3-3. There's, uh, there's definite smoke in Munich. Uh, the two Borussias are ahead, Dortmund getting a win, I think against Mainz. And yeah, so um, Bayern already 9 points behind Dortmund. I still don't cut them out. That's how dominant they have been lately, as of late. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be curious how that is gonna go. Again, let me know what you were watching. I really agree with the assessment of the game. If you saw these as well that I had, um, and yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I'm gonna talk super classical uh, very, very soon. It won't be a long video, but I just need to mention that. Talk to you soon. Bye.